Okay, so hear me out. Okay, I'm, so I'm you cast you. a spell to have this like demon with a giant pumpkin head, and like he's he's like jacked, you know, big cock, just out on like the tarot card. So like you know he's a looker, okay, but he's got like a pumpkin head, but you can work with it. And then you like cast a spell, and you don't think it did anything, so you're like, well, whatever. And then like you hear some some sound outside, and then you realize <laughs> that someone's stolen your jack-o'-lantern and then you realize that he's used that as his giant pumpkin head and then he's gonna like fuck you into oblivion but what i want to posit to you is what if you had like carved scooby-doo on your pumpkin i have been known to carve scooby-doo on my pumpkin so like what happens if this giant monster demon fucker person man thing has a Scooby-Doo head. And then he, like, turns them all into, like, a devil. And then that's just how it proceeds. Like, it's very presumptuous of him to assume I just carved a very, like, regular jack-o'-lantern. I mean, I feel like... Well, number one, we have romance reasons. Which is my favorite excuse. <laughs> number two, um, clearly these two are fated mates. Because she... <laughs> ca- she'll love, it, she'll she love him at his scooby She originally cast a spell... <laughs> Well, no, I'm just saying because they're faded mates, because she cast this spell that got botched two years ago, so he's mm-hmm. been stuck in the in between question mark watching her. Yeah, just real I rage and horny. I always feel like there's a <laughs> man with a flaming jack o' lantern head and a terrifying <laughs> penis watching me from just beyond the veil. Uh, <laughs> while I. While I watch what like three D monster porn questions three D monster porn, but I figure because they're faded mates, she cast the spell. He's been lingering in the other world, watching her for two years, and then finally she summons him into this world. So presumably, if they're faded, it was also faded that she carved that pumpkin. <laughs> but <laughs> what if I was faded, and my heart told me to carve Scooby Doo or like some other. Well, then maybe you would just be fucking Scooby Doo <laughs> fucking man, like. I, I just, I couldn't get beyond that. Like, my brain was that just, like... That wasn't even the thing that stopped me up with this one. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> I wonder <laughs> what stopped you on this one. I just was, like, going back through all the pumpkins I carved, and I was like, well, that'd be really sad if they got, like, deboshed in that manner. I'll raise you a worse option. Ooh. One year, my family, instead of carving Uh-oh. pumpkins, we painted pumpkins, mm-hmm. and each of us did a little self-pumpkin. And oh, we no. used yarn oh. for our hair, and, like... So, like, I had a little brunette pumpkin, and we, like, painted our faces on it, and, like, my brothers had theirs, and I distinctly remember this Halloween because my brother was a teenager at the time, so we had, like, you know, gross teenage boy, like, long hair. He was making his pumpkin for him, and she put a bunch of orange yarn for his hair because he had red hair, and then she unwound all the ends of the yarn because she was like, well, you have split ends, so I'm gonna... (laughs) coming at him <laughs> i know and for some reason that just like stuck in my brain oh no <laughs> she was like i'm gonna give your pumpkin split ends um but so it could be worse he fucked by the split end pumpkin his, <laughs> no as a family member <laughs> oh my god or or if you did a little self-portrait pumpkin <laughs> he could have shut up for it wearing a pumpkin that is you <laughs> that's what i'm saying i feel it's, like it's very risky for this man a whole to, like, new meaning to fucking yourself <laughs> God. <laughs> um yeah so this this book is jack um the author is Layla uh, Faye. Faye. Mm-hmm, that's fitting um it is halloween monster erotica so um that's what it is also, and there's a sequel out now i, I just have some questions Me um too. well actually The experience of reading this was – it was like an out-of-body experience. But I am recalling now that the pumpkin not only was her jack-o'-lantern, which moved, though, presumably. Like, his mouth moved when he talked. Yeah, like, raging teeth. like Yeah. She says he has, like, fangs. I don't really Mm -hmm. know. But it's lit from inside, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's Mm -hmm. also on fire. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's, like, burning up for you, baby. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Red dress. Um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she paused i could like see <laughs> see the, the pros and to... cons <laughs> I, was, I was buffering she was buffering <laughs> oh my god i'm just it's the flaming head i also look, look 
And I tried to go easy because monster erotica, especially mm-hmm. something like this that's, I mean, I assume partially a joke, right? I would hope. It's yeah. at least kind of tongue-in-cheek. Well, his cum was like pumpkin spice latte, but like better. Sure. So. Which was horrifying. Either it's, it's, a, it's a joke or a dream. It's like, the. I mean, I hate pumpkin spice, so maybe it's like my nightmare, but, you know. <laughs> but I... But I can, like, read a book and be like, well, I'm not the intended audience for mm-hmm. this, so I shouldn't rate mm-hmm. it lower. My, it wasn't written very well, which – that was one thing for me. But also, yeah. I just – as I was reading it, I was like, why – this doesn't sound like a pleasant experience. No, she was full-on sobbing and scared, and he was like, I could have also just, like, fucked you in half and then, like, taken your dead body. That's true. He was and like – And I was like, okay. So he's truly the devil. Like, he's not some, like, cute devil. He's, like, the devil. <laughs> so at that moment, I highlighted it, and I was like, okay, yeah, I wouldn't want to fuck with him nor fuck him, but, like, more power to ya. I mean, she was both scared and turned on. It's just – well, but, like, some of the thing, like, <sighs> there are some things that just, like, aren't horny. I mean, like, hot to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to like get the words. It scrambled my brain reading it this did. novella. It did. I just finished it. Actually I, actually, I have like 11 pages left, but I finished it for all intents and purposes. Oh, oh, you haven't gotten to the ending. I believe I've gotten to enough to know. Uh, um, have uh-oh. you? I don't know. I feel like let me sum it up for you. Actually, please basically. do. That's actually better. That's better. Yeah, let me sum it up. That's so better. we get okay. through this whole this pumpkin man demon Mm -hmm. shows Mm -hmm. up and is like you can either (laughs) submit or i can kill you and fuck your corpse basically Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she's like well i'm horny and (laughs) he has a very long tongue also it is described okay i have a tongue description yes many times slithering meaty tongues it also at one point he's Mm. like penetrate like he's having sex with her Mm -hmm. penetrating her Mm -hmm. and then his tongue just grows until Mm -hmm. it's so long that he can Mm -hmm. stimulate her clit at the same time a red long meaty monstrosity yeah is what that tongue was i will take the vines any day over a red long meaty monstrosity it's the way that she consistently described it as meaty for me yeah Anyway, so she yeah. has a lot of sex with – it sounds really painful. His dick mm-hmm. is the length of her forearm. But, but he has magical lube. But it's he only true. used it for her ass. That's so, also true. I mean, that's kind of rude. You, you know? win some, you lose some. Like, he, he invented it for her For pleasure. her. Yeah. Specifically for so, – So he could kind of rude. fuck her ass. But yeah. whatever. So they have all this sex. And mm-hmm. then she's like, but why do you like me? And he's like, you're super fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically wow. it that's the joke. he's like you're super fuckable and also you're into me and i was like well these aren't great reasons but you know whatever and then she's like but are you gonna leave me and he's like well you could like like i'll disappear tonight but you can mm-hmm. summon me again basically she can just keep summoning him over but, and over again see what i loved is that she asked the hard question sometimes novellas don't ask so like the why are you into me i felt like like i highlighted it i was like you're you're a hard-hitting journalist yeah. i need to I I wanted to know too. Like true. he summoned you, but like, what's going on up there? I appreciated that it at least gave us a little yeah. bit more than the other s- pumpkin man. That's wondered. true. That mm-hmm. is so mm-hmm. true. She did at least ask the question. <laughs> um. Anyway, she's like, "Well, I don't really want to keep summoning you every day. Like, do you want mm-hmm. that?" And he's like, "It's not ideal. I would rather just be with you forever." But I don't know, Debbie Ryan. Uh, <laughs> If that's something that you would want to do. And she's like, well, how can I make that happen? What do I got to do? How can we shake this up? And he's like, well, I could breed you Hmm. because a a baby would tie us together forever and you would be immortal. And we could live here and I could just glamour myself and I could look normal to everybody else. Or you could come back to my world. Mm -hmm. We could travel Mm -hmm. worlds together, whatever. And she's like... Oh, bet. I I know you're supposed to love your partner for who they are, but I sure would love glamour on that man. Oh, he would would glamour for her. I know. I know. But I sure. (laughs) Well, so, and she's like, well, I've always wanted a kid. I'd given up on, like, the dream of a family. Yeah. But you know what? Let's do it. Sounds good. I can be with you forever. So then 
he does proceed to, you know, for those of you with a breeding kink, and I am not kink shaming here, you might be into this. However, I will note that he has some interesting, co- I think I probably highlighted some. He has some comments about um, his very fertile seed, where he's basically mm. like, it'll take really quickly. Okay. I got some very fertile I'm... seed. Before, you only got the juice without the seed, but this oh. time I could give you the full mix. So, okay, so do you think... Do you think yes, I do. Okay, so like full pumpkin <laughs> seeds, just like... That is fully what I think. It's okay. never said. Okay. They don't say that. <laughs> those are those are pretty big. That is so, how I read it, though. And I feel like, he, he'd, be, like he'd have pretty big ones, so... He said that, I could give okay. you the full mix. And he, he has four balls, too, right? He does have four balls. Yeah, okay. Critical so lots, information. Yeah, okay, nice. Got it. Um, so she agrees. Mm-hmm. This is where they they make love, obviously. And while it's happening, his tongue is so long uh-huh. that it can stimulate her clit, um, which is horrible, dare I say. He, uh, I much prefer the vines. I didn't even know? like the vines, but yeah, I'll take the vines. The vines were better because they weren't meaty. And... I, no. You know, because his dick is a pumpkin, kind of. It sh- it, it, well, it is. I read it as, like, a an icing bag. Not, oh. like... <laughs> oh. 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 Listen, she describes the head oh. as conical, like a sharpened pencil, with a circular hole at the uh-huh. tip that is uh-huh. opening and closing. Oh. Yeah, the description. And then it had, like, ridges, like ruffles. Mm-hmm. So we're now fucking a chip. Like, ruffles have ridges. <laughs> They're but like, like I think like it's real. Yeah, but they're like stacked on top of each other. Oh, is I don't, that? I I thought I so thought because it just meant like, five like individual. Ri- I don't know. Well, because at first I thought it was like a pumpkin. You know that like pumpkins have like ridges that kind of like go all around. But then I was like, how can only one ridge be in? So I was like, wait, is it like anal beads? <laughs> you guys can't. You guys can't see it, but I am doing the thousand mile stare, like. <laughs> This haunts me. I know. I was trying to... Hang on. It gets worse, though. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> you haven't read it. No. So he's like, you know, if I'm gone in the morning, like, oh, mm-hmm. well, he stays inside her. Because he's like, mm. we got to keep you, you know, plugged up, basically. To make sure the baby takes. <laughs> and he's like, if I'm gone in the morning, it's fine. You can just summon me back. If I'm here in the morning, you're pregnant. And then we get to the oh. epilogue. And the epilogue begins... With Susie sitting on a low milking stool in the garden of a secluded mm. cottage where they're mm. living together that week. And she's mm. very pregnant. And she's, like, mm-hmm. stroking her belly. Mm. And Jack comes mm-hmm. out, the flames surrounding his pumpkin almost <laughs> invisible in the sunlight. And then she gestures for him to sit in an armchair that is in front of her. Yeah. And he's like, ugh, do we have to? And she says... We need to give back, Jack. You told me that with you, I would be overflowing. And I am. I am overflowing with happiness. How can I not share even just a taste of it with other people? And at this point, she proceeds to jerk him off. Mm -hmm. And then as he comes, she catches it in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, The the honey-colored cum Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. caught... She caught his – this is a quote. Caught the full load in the bowl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Licks him clean, zips him up, as you do. As you do. As one does, always. And then proceeds to funnel it into the row of glass bottles that she's got sitting on the table. Um, Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Okay. slaps a label on it that reads, Organic pumpkin spice syrup contains monster semen. Drink responsibly. <gasps> Ooh. Which is so they're enterprising. actually hilarious. That's the funniest possible epilogue for this story. So this is why the pilgrims are giving thanks. Yes. So okay, I have to assume that well, this is a joke based purely on the epilogue. On that, at least they at least they labeled it. You know, I just like I actually I think that my soul like ascended out of my body. I was watching myself from above like a spirit as I read that epilogue because mm-hmm. what's going on there? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love romance, Anna. Me too. <laughs> I'm staring off like, do I? <laughs> now you're doing the thousand thousand yards, thousand miles. You know the stare. Mm-hmm. This one was a lot. This I thought one was the, a lot. Because we also read Abducted by 
the pumpkin, the pumpkin thing, and I thought that one was kind of a lot, but now I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that was nothing. That one, I wanted, I suppose, like, novellas are hard because you can only really judge for what they are because they're a novella, but some are longer and maybe perhaps better than others. And that one just didn't quite have the writing that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, but it had the vines, so. And I was, I did acti- actively search out for the vines, so I cannot gripe about that. I just realized we never talked about what this episode is. Hello no. and welcome to this bonus Halloween mm-hmm. episode of Romancer TBR. It is chaos already. Look, I was already reading reading seasonally. Mm-hmm. See, I'm not much of a seasonal reader. It was truly kind of like pulling teeth to get me to even read the few ones that I did just because I'm such a mood reader. And what I really wanted was to keep reading uh, The Immortals After Dark, uh, I mean, Hunger Like a Mother. That's and that, Yes, but then I had to stop for Taylor Swift. So then I, I was like, okay, well, I can listen to Taylor Swift and read these. Because then, you know. And so I was... You know, I was fully prepared, but was I, though? I guess not. So I have been reading Halloween-ish mm-hmm. books for most of the month, including, of course, some Immortals After Dark, but then yes. some other various... I mean, we, you also read After Midnight and The Vampire Who Loved I did, Me, yes. Which yeah, are historical those, paranormals. Mm-hmm. And those were for book club, or the first one was. I really liked the Teresa Medeiros ones, and then, obviously, I started A Hunger Like No Other based on your recommendation and it's very good i wrote on goodreads like from like page two my eyes were just like popping out of my skull and they were making like the old timey <laughs> car horn noise like i was just fully there for it and that one is so good. i haven't finished it yet because on midnights came out and i had to read some novellas and things happened but um i'm loving it so far it's so good it is so good Mm-hmm. Once again, content warning for that one. If any of oh, y'all yeah. have not read Immortals After Dark, that one's big non-consent. Mm-hmm. I love that book. It's very good. Mm. So we figured we would talk about some of the chaotic Kindle Unlimited Halloween novellas that we read in the past, what, day and a half or something? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also other Halloween mm-hmm. fall Halloween recommendations, um, some of which I read last year and would recommend some of which I read this year. And then I also, I have a very long list of books that I would like to read before the end of the month. So I figured I I would tack those on at the end. Mm -hmm. I have a few as well. So besides the two we just talked about, Jack and Abducted by the Pumpkin King, Mm -hmm. I read one other novella. Me too. Yours, I mean, I think both of ours we did good. So mine was called Pumpkin Pounder by Laura Lovely. I was mm-hmm. not expecting that to be as good as it was. I'm happy that you read that one because I hadn't checked it out yet. I didn't know what to expect going in. It just – it was, like, kind of a very, very loose Cinderella reta- – mm-hmm. like, gender swap mm-hmm. Cinderella where they meet and then he disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, but very, very loose in the Cinderella retelling. The A pumpkin pounder, which I did not know, is a woman who likes to have sex with redheads. I read the summary and I was like, that's not where I was expecting this to go. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that that was a thing, but it sure is a thing. Um, And so she, it's Halloween and they're in New York at this cool bar thing. And she runs into this very redheaded Irishman. Hmm. Doesn't get his name, but like instant connection. Tragic. Um, They have this whirlwind night where they're, you know, flirting at the bar, like kind of going to get it on. And then he takes her on this very lovely date at this Italian restaurant and then they go back to his hotel and it's amazing. Um, And he is just like the perfect man. Mm -hmm. Um, Number one, he's Irish. Number two, he's very kind. She is kind of in her head during a lot of this where like it's her personality. She is of her friends, the pumpkin founder. She has casual sex with men all the time. Mm-hmm. love them and leave them. She never does more than one night. That's her thing. But she keeps kind of having these weird freezes where she gets in her head and starts to panic. And every time he notices and is able to Aww. like back off and get her out of it. It's very, very lovely. Um, so they have this whirlwind night. And then the next day, he's clearly very into her and mm-hmm. asks for her phone number. And she hesitantly writes it down and gives it to him, thinking he's not going to call her anyway. And then he never calls her. And she never got his name. 
And she's kind of devastated by this. And then she has this whole kind of mental spiral that ends with her talking to her therapist and you're there for it about like why she does like her self worth is suffering. And does she consider herself to be like a person that people would want to be involved with past one night? And it was all, I think, very well handled. I was like crying at one point. I was like, what are we doing here? It was so much. Um, and then, of course, there's a happily ever after where you, he comes back and it turns out, obviously, he just like the house cleaning at the hotel got rid of her phone number. So he had no way of contacting mm-hmm. her or finding mm-hmm. her. It wasn't like he just abandoned her. Um, but it was very emotional and also very hot. Wow. And it was, I'm assuming, like fall Halloween vibes. Oh, it was on Halloween that they met. Okay. Okay. Yes. I think you mentioned that. So she's in costume. She is... um. What's her name? Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas because oh, she loves yeah. Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King. Gosh. Oh, I forgot he was called the Pumpkin King. <laughs> That's going to be a rough one for me <laughs> in the future. Alarmingly close to these <laughs> pumpkin novellas. Although abducted by the Pumpkin King, he doesn't have a pumpkin head. I thought he did, but he didn't. Yeah, he like, he basically like, it was like a, like a, helmet. a yeah, and then he, like, took it off, and then he was just kind of a man, but he had control over pumpkins and vines, and... He also was orange. <laughs> and he was... Vi- she was like, you're so very orange. Um, so, we, yeah, we had that, and then he also... So the vines then, in that one, mm. grew a pumpkin, like... A pumpkin dildo, dildo yes. Yeah, yeah. And it... That one, I was just like, whoa. Those are some talented vines fertilizer i thought they were only going to be for the bondage me which too. they also were for mm-hmm. so no. then it was like double pre- penetration with a pumpkin dildo That's yeah that was sentence. a lot mm-hmm. but then i read jack and i was like maybe it wasn't that big of a deal <laughs> no no because i don't yeah no maybe i'll feel brave enough at some point to encounter that story again um maybe not um maybe but the one that <laughs> But the one that I read, let me get the. It was Blood Moon, I believe. Let me get the author. Is and it? It was Jillian. Yeah, it was so good. I had Jillian the Graves. best time. Re- yeah, Jillian Graves. I had the best time reading this book. Um, basically, it's just kind of like your typical, um, like mixed between like they're the strange, so like any like magical creature, like vampire shifters, witches, stuff like that, and then like the humans so she runs like a strange bar that's basically just for the strange um creatures she makes his potions and her friend also makes like body potions or like lotions and stuff um and then he you like started out and she is angry that the bar across the street is trying to run her out of business and they're like kind of you got mailing it a little bit where um you know advertising on her turf and doing all this shady stuff so then Mm. she's just really ticked off and then um they're having a party and she just is like really horny (laughs) and for some (laughs) reason she like takes a shower and her friend gave her this like like erotic lotion like body wash so then she's just like real horny in the shower and then he like walks in the bathroom because she locked the door going to her because her friend lived like above the place like she locked that door, but she forgot to lock the second door, which is scary <laughs> yeah. because this was open to the public. So she's just showering. And then he's like, whoa, that sounds like a pretty great time that you're having. Might I inquire <laughs> as to who you are? So we've got a little bit of Elf. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How many movies can I throw in here? Um, and he is a vampire. It lost me just a hair because his name is Vlad, like Vladimir the Vampire. And he's a, he was a little too goth um, <laughs> for me. I'm not necessarily into the vampire feel. I'm more so into, like, the shifter, like, werewolf. You don't want a big titty goth BF? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, like, obviously he's very hot and he's got it going for him. And then she's just like, fuck it. I'm ready. She doesn't know who he is. And so she's just ready to have a one night to, like, get all this stress out. And so then then he, like, bites her. So he can, like, hear all of her thoughts. So she's like, wow, I just want him to, like, fuck me real bad. <laughs> like, I want his immortal dick. Like, I want to do all this stuff. And he's like, bet. Let's do it. And so they just mess up her friend's bed a little bit. Um, very hot. 
the dirty talk is very good he consistently calls her his good little witch and his little slut and it it was very good so they have this like incredible one night stand and then um he goes out to the party she cleans up goes out to the party her friend's like hey meet this man named vladimir and then she's like oh shit so then she like runs off which same because she was also like wow he's still so hot fuck he was like reading her read his mind and so it was just like really funny just everything she was saying because honestly same like you just got railed like a train and you're not supposed to like (laughs) think about it and then they just have a lot more sex and apparent like it turns out shadier things are happening at his bar but they're not his fault so then they need to figure that out and yeah it was an absurd time but i had the best time reading that one and the writing was really good it was really funny and um i don't think there's a second one to that but i would sure read one so i don't even good. like monster romance generally but boy yeah. have i been having a good time with it mm-hmm. i don't i don't mind it um i feel like i just I can make anything work, really, I think, if I like the writing and, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I can just kind of, like, vibe with it. Um, And this one, I I really had the best time. It was only, like, a hundred and some pages, so it didn't take too long. Um, And it was short, but it wasn't abrupt. Like, you felt everything pretty much happened. Obviously, like, the end thing was, like, solved pretty fast, but you you weren't there for that, so it didn't really matter. Um, But, yeah, I really want more of that series. I was trying to think of a segue. I don't have one. My next no. novella, um, also a novella that I, I think it's a novella. Either that or it's a very short book, which what is that if not a novella? I think it's just a novella that's on the longer end is um, that time I got drunk and saved a demon. I did see you read this one. I'm excited for you to talk about it. I have been, I'd been putting it off because I knew it was going to be a good time. But I needed to be in the right mindset. And I was like, it's spooky season. Now is the right mindset for that time I got drunk and saved a demon. And I'm not going to say it's like the best book I've ever read or anything like that. But I will say it knows what it is. Yeah. And you have a great time. You go in and you're like, well, the title is that time I got drunk and saved a demon. So you are, that's the vibe you have going Mm -hmm. in. And then it leans into that vibe. It makes very little set in terms of like i don't know she eats a bucket of nachos at one point but they're in this fantasy Same. world i mean in my fantasy world i'm also eating buckets of nachos so i mean yeah and i was like i don't know what's going on but i am having a good time and it manages to be an entire quest they have a whole yeah. quest they destroy four temples she she literally more than average exactly <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what the title suggests. She's drunk. The whole she time? Saves, no, just at the beginning. <laughs> she's very drunk. She's and having demon, an absolute rage. She saves this demon from this landslide. It's trapped under her and it tries to kill her. And she gets home oh. eventually. And then he That's shows good. up the next day and is not crazy now. Because apparently she uh, she's a spice farmer. Her whole family, they farm spices. Her name is you, Cinnamon. You froze a little. I thought you were going to say Spice Girl. And I was like, <laughs> freaking same. <laughs> no, she's a spice farmer. Her name is Cinnamon. Mm. Um, which is a joke. All the kids have those names. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it turns out, for some reason, the lore. There's this goddess that all the people worship, and every, uh, I think, 15 years or something like that, she protects them from the demons. She keeps the demons out. The demons, those are bad guys. They'll go crazy. Mm -hmm. And every 15 years or so, the demons go crazy. And so the goddess, like, summons some specially chosen warriors they're chosen ones, and they have to go off and fight the demons. And, you know, usually they don't come back, was my understanding of it. But it's like an honor to be chosen. And so she's like, I don't want to be chosen. You know, yeah, same. You. That's so relatable, because I wouldn't want to be chosen either. No, <laughs> she's like, not a fan. Um, So they go off to do this. It turns out, what's actually happening, according to the demon who showed up, is that the demons are not bad guys. They're just, like, oh. different werewolves and shifters oh, like- and orcs and things like that. Um, and the goddess is not actually a goddess. She's this necromancer who... Mm. I don't really understand her beef with the demons. I didn't super care. Look, I don't know. All I know is that the demons... She has the power to, like, make them go crazy. And Cinnamon breaks them out of that. Oh. 
So when he gets like a face full of cinnamon, he's like, whoa, not possessed anymore. Um, and so he's like, what's up? I need you to come with me and destroy this chalice. And then he finds out there are three more. So they got to go destroy those together. And he, oh, he, he's hot number one yeah he's got like waist length black hair and big horns and just shows up and is like we're going on this trip we're going to save the something rocket ship we're, yeah yeah and she doesn't really want to but she agrees and they go and they have a great time and very quickly she kills an alligator one t- like it's floated she kills an alligator and he immediately is super horny and he's like well i'm gonna marry you and she's like pardon And he's like, when we're done with this, you're going to be my wife. And she's like, I did not agree to this. And he's like, too bad. Um, And I respect that. And then they go on this whole journey. They free a bunch of demons who've been enslaved. They engage in some various piracy and dragon Mm. battles. They have a lot of engaging in piracy. Not a lot, but they have a healthy amount of kinky sex. A healthy amount. As you do. And they, like, save everybody and defeat the bad guy. And everything wraps up. And I want to read – the next one is that time I – I want to say it's, like, yeeted a love potion at a werewolf. Yeeted? Something like that. I love that. (laughs) I might have made that up. But, um – Nice. It's really – it's just, like, funny. Again, Mm -hmm. it's not the most amazing writing I've ever read, but it it knows what it is. And it gives you exactly what you want. And you're like, what a good time. Wow. A hero's quest for sex and souls. I do love that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I didn't have any more novellas, but I did read um, Lana Harper's uh, Paybacks, A Witch. And then I had already read From Bad to Cursed before that because I had received the arc and then I had the audiobook. Um, and I really liked book two. And I liked book two because there wasn't a lot of world building and I didn't find like a ton of like – in this witchy town and everything is like witchy and at least from what I can remember because that's never really my favorite thing about witchy romance right. and that was a little bit heavier in book one um but I still had a good time in book one it revolves around revenge which obviously I love revenge um basically her vigilante shit, if you will <laughs> vigilante shit I fantasize about revenge um her old ex-boyfriend from I think high school um broke up with her and kind of like destroyed her life and then she left the town got rid of her magic because if you leave too far you don't have your magic anymore and then she returns back years later he has now dated her friend broken her heart and while he was also cheating with like the popular girl from high school um who is the, the love interest um so they're basically just like they got you know drinks one night and we're like let's just ruin this man's life Mm -hmm. and i was like i am so here for this and while they didn't do bodily harm because they agreed not to and i was a little bit sad about that um they destroyed or they attempted to just like destroy his pride which the next best thing honestly and so they have these like disney channel games um where they each like family there's like a prominent family and um each one competes for the grand prize and then the main emmy the main character um her family is like the family of like referees basically they like the grum grimoire or whatever the grimoire um grimoire. is like the magic yeah that that thing um it's like the magical book with the spells and the <sighs> thoughts and controls kind of like her mind so she's like speaking through it and so she can like dictate what's happening and then um you've got the different siblings you've got like two twins the one is the hero of the next book and then you've got her love interest is one other house and then you've got the griffith guy who's um the bad guy and then talia Mm -hmm. is the one from the um her love interest and so then basically it's just them trying to like work together to sabotage him which is always fun and i just really related to the vibes of being the eternal referee and never having to compete there's something so homey about that like i would never like if i was on disney channel and like i signed this contract for like sweet life of zach and cody and i'm doing great i'm having fun and they come up to me and they're like hey hannah you've got to go like put on some athletic wear and like go on tv and embarrass yourself on live television for sports 
Absolutely not. That would be the most stressful thing in my life. So I really related to her just having to be the referee. Obviously, things go down and maybe she's not the referee the entire time, which I was like, well, that sucks. So I'm technically more (laughs) like her cousin, (laughs) but it is what it is. Um, I ended up really liking it. Um, And then I obviously had read the second one before that. You, we know my memory, not great. So I'm going to reread that. And then I have the arc for the third one. Um, and I thought they were really well written. Um, there were a lot of details and adjectives and like metaphors in book one that definitely kind of, I, I had to speed my audiobook up very fast because she was taking a lot of whimsical pauses. And it, I don't know. Heaven forbid a narrator take a whimsical <laughs> pause. I haven't the time. <laughs> I mean, maybe i'm just Have the time for your whimsy <laughs> maybe i've just got a cold pumpkin heart and no more whimsy in my body got i was just kind of getting i was kind of getting a little a annoying thick pumpkin dildo <laughs> for a heart <laughs> that's what i run on <laughs> um so yeah that was a that was a fun witchy one i read that and... first one back when it came out and yeah it was really excellent mm-hmm. i have the second one i need to read it Anyway, um, I have a few other ones. I have one more novella Same. that I did read earlier, um, which is How to Get a... It's not Halloween strictly, but it is a monster romance mm-hmm. novella. How to Get a Girlfriend When You're a Terrifying Monster by Marie Cardinal. It's the story of my life. Number one, sold based on the title. Number two, it's a <laughs> sapphic monster romance between a witch and a... <laughs> so the witch is studying this endless void. That, like, Mm -hmm. you open a portal, she's going into this endless void, and the endless void, the endless, if you will, is what it's called. The endless is both the void itself and what is in the void. Like, it is the void. And my love life. Yes. But also it is. (laughs) And, you know, it's wiggling around. And (laughs) and pieces, like, fragments of it it. will fall off. Oh. And sometimes it likes to the the fragments will go invade the human world and try to. Well, it's not very spider monkey of it. Um, kind of I'm gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> every time. I'm about to start like taxing you for every reference, <laughs> every Twilight reference. We have every a Twilight, Twilight reference. <laughs> Twilight. Yeah, I, mean, I, I have never even read the books. <laughs> Jar. Just the movie. Anyway, these fragments fall off, and they kind of become their own beings with their own wants, and then they get absorbed back into the Endless. And so the Endless gains knowledge and experience that way. And this particular fragment falls off and has edges and develops her own wants, and for the first time is a her that is separate from the Endless, and decides she doesn't want to go back to being a part of the Endless. She wants to be her. And she sees this witch come in through the portal a few times to check things out, and she tries to- she is- immediately so enamored of her enamored Mm -hmm. and tries to structure her body because it's this kind of shapeless shape-shifting type Mm -hmm. thing um but she tries to make herself sort of humanoid i listen i am fascinated one of my favorite literary devices i'm about to be really annoying i'm so sorry one of my favorite literary devices is defamiliarization Mm -hmm. and i have a whole half-baked theory somewhere in the back of my brain about my love of defamiliarization being one of the reasons that I love romance as a genre, but here it's just so well done because she's this creature thing from another dimension. She doesn't really know like what humans are, but the process of observing a, Mm. I mean, witch, but human from basically an alien perspective of like someone who doesn't really know what a human is. And then not only that, but trying to build it herself, she has to get really into the nitty gritty of like, what joints are and what makes up a leg and how does like an eyeball work do they not move around the head like she her eyes will like slide around to look at her when she's talking (laughs) like it's just so fascinating and the witch is immediately gone for her she shows up and is like oh she's hot um (laughs) very into that and they they come back into the witch's world and things are going wrong but as soon as they're outside of the endless every time the witch looks at her there's something about, like, the way it's evolved that when humans look at the Endless, they, like, white out with terror and just start screaming. Like, they lose mm-hmm. all of their higher faculties. So every time she looks at um, Trillin is the name she gave herself. Every time she looks at Trillin, she just, like, devolves into terror and starts screaming. <laughs> so she can't look at her. It's it's quite charming. It's very mm-hmm. cute. H.E.A., I'm obsessed with the defamiliarization. 
So that is my wow. monster witch sapphic romance recommendation. Well, that – I saw the cover and the cover was adorable on your, like, monthly it's tracker. It's so cute. The whole time I was just like, this is adorable, actually. Mm-hmm. Trillin is precious. She just really wants to, like, friend her. Mm. <sighs> Found family. It's so cute. Um, and then the only other one that you haven't read is Love in the Time of Serial Killers, which isn't really a fall or isn't really Halloween or fall because it takes place in Florida, which I expose is spooky in its own regard. <laughs> but yeah. um, terrifying, in fact, <laughs> terrifying. Um, but the cover has a, a scary house and it reminded me of Monster House, um, the iconic movie. So I did want to include that one. And I very much liked that book as well. Vibes. Um, yeah. The only other ones... I think what I read last year, I didn't read a ton of Halloween romance. Mm-hmm. Um, although I did, I do remember reading Plain Bad Heroines. Um, and I'm blanking on the author. That is not a romance, although it has some romantic elements to it, loosely. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a thick book, but I did the audiobook. It's it's like mm-hmm. gothic, I guess, horror um, that has a split past and present timeline and is very, very sapphic. And I just remember having a great time. So I'll add that one. Other than that, I do have a list of books that I would like to read. Yeah, I only have a few for that. The only other oh. two that we've both read are The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy and Angelica Frankenstein oh, makes her match. Those would be um, perfect. Perfect. They're so good. Um, both weird and spooky and absurd in their own regard. Um, oh, yeah. So odd. Those books I are tried so both. weird. They're so good, though. <laughs> I was sobbing at both, um, and I was truly confused yeah. by both. So you spend the whole time going, "What am I reading?" Truly, what am I reading? One, like the undertaking of Heart and Mercy, is like you've got mail, but the strangest. It's a very retelling. faithful. You've got mail. Retelling yes. too. They have very the cafe faithful. scene. She's reading a book. I was like, "Wow, is this verbatim?" <laughs> I know. And that one, I think, does take place. Was like she They were having like a 4th of July celebration, so it's kind of like summer, too. Um, but the vibes are absurd enough with skeletons and candles and, and stuff. Like that demigods and zombies. Yeah. Yeah. It was hot a- talking owls and rabbits and things happening, so. I did also read Soulless by Gail Carriger, which is a paranormal mm. historical. Um, it's also first in a series, which is kind of interesting because the end is an HEA in that they, like, get married. And the rest of the series follows them. And so I don't think I will be reading the rest of those books because it seems kind of like plot first and then romance. Yeah. And it seems like there's some conflicts involving their relationship in later Mm. books that I just don't have any interest in reading. Mm -hmm. But it is kind of a neat – it's like a version of Victorian London where the supernat – there are werewolves and vampires and ghosts. You don't really Mm. interact with the ghosts, but you do interact with the vampires and werewolves. And they have their – clan like vampire nest Mm -hmm. and a werewolf pack or whatever and they're all supposed to be registered but there are some loose ones and they've started vanishing so there's some mystery um the heroine is she's called preternatural Mm -hmm. rather than supernatural and uh they're basically referred to as soulless because to be supernatural you have an overabundance of soul and to be preternatural you don't have a soul and what that um, means for her is that when she touches a supernatural, they lose all of their abilities. Mm. Not like forever, just like as long as she is maintaining contact with them. So mm-hmm. it starts with a, her accidentally, well, in self-defense, killing a, a loose vampire who yeah. tries to attack her. And as soon as he touches her, his fangs disappear. And he's like trying to bite her and he can't <laughs> because she's a preternatural. Uh, and then the hero is the head of the supernatural organization or whatever. He's also the leader of the pack. He's the alpha werewolf. Mm-hmm. Um, and they- You've certainly got my attention. Yes. They keep, <laughs> they've, they've kept having these run-ins and they dislike each other very much. Oh, he's Scottish also. Um, <laughs> critical information Need you for say me. more. <laughs> um, they keep having these run-ins. They claim to not like each other. And then they're like making out in an alley one day as you do <laughs> with people that you really don't like. Um, and like everybody else knows that they're in love, right? It was good. By the end, I was kind of like, uh, the plot is a lot, but – Yeah. And I could have used more romance, mm-hmm. and so I probably won't read the rest of the series. But if you're just looking for a good time, it was a good time. Speaking- also, sorry, the very irregular – the secret society. What is that book yes. called? The very irregular soci- society. No, the very secret society. Oh, my God. Irregular witches. That's a hard one for me. <laughs> it really is. 
also that one is really not cute. a lot of romance but it is very no cute. i was expecting a little bit more romance um mm-hmm. and a little bit more steam but still very good very charming very soft mm-hmm. um the whimsy was well appreciated by me in that one <laughs> yes it's also kind of a christmas romance yeah or um solstice is what mm-hmm. they actually celebrate so you can really read it after Any halloween season, yeah yeah, and then um, what was it? Oh, yeah, the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. It's the mm. four book series. Um, because you said one that kind of like follows like a relationship. Um, they don't get together together until like the end of the mm. series or like I suppose kind of the start of book four. But um, it's like it follows them throughout. The second one deals with um Vlad the Impaler, <laughs> who is an actual person impaling people and not in a hot way (laughs) not in a hot way there are baths of blood and things happening if you don't like gore i would not do those books it's like they're forensic scientists so they get very nitty-gritty about it um obviously the first one is about is about uh jack the ripper and then um you know each book kind of like takes a real life serial killer situation and like rewrites it some things are liberties were taken but it was very good i loved the audiobooks i love thomas cresswell with my entire being i just want one to take home with me and um they were perfect for fall and or halloween the second one especially is like a halloween very spooky um you don't quite know what's happening at any time Hmm. um but yeah i have to reread that series because it made me both Creeped out, grossed out, but also happy. So, spooky indeed. The trifecta. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, other than that, I was gonna just run through my the rest of my go long list of books. These are not books that I am recommending because Mm -hmm. I have not read them, so I cannot confirm anything about the quality or content. But they are books that I would like to read, and so you may also be interested in reading them. Are, I don't know the name of the series, but the first book is Firelight by Kristen Callahan. Callahan. Um, mm. It's mm-hmm. uh, another paranormal, I believe, Victorian series. Um, Hedging His Bets by Celia Kyle. I just really want to read it. This isn't strictly a spooky season read. It is a hedgehog shifter romance, and I just think it sounds like a great time. What could be better? A Certain Wolfish Charm. Again, this is the first book in a series. I don't know the series. Um, By Lydia Dare is, I think, another paranormal historical romance. Another one of those is Bite Me Your Grace by Brooklyn Anne. Obviously a vampire romance. Uh, Too Wicked to Kiss is another one that's in a series um, by Erica Ridley. So that series. Mm. Oh, you've read those, right? I read the first one. Is that the second one? Is it might the be the second one? one. I don't remember. The second one's the ghost one. I got like halfway through. It's a very long book. The audiobook was super long. And so I had it from the library and then it got returned. So I haven't finished mm. it. I really liked the first one and I was vibing with the second one until it got returned. And so I it's on remember, my TBR. Are they paranormal or are they just like gothic spooky vibes? That one is actually paranormal. The first okay. one is mainly just kind of like unreliable you think he's a killer kind yeah. of like after midnight they kind of reminded me of the two um okay. where one's actually paranormal but um yeah it was she did the gothic vibe very well okay well i like erica ridley so excited mm-hmm. about those that's why I read um them. the magpie lord by kj charles i think this also might be the first in a series this is um queer romance they're magicians also historical um charming your dad by sarah blue i've actually started and so far i'm having a great time the premise of this one is she's a witch uh and she's been kind of lying like her boyfriend doesn't know that she's a witch because he's a human and she's like weirdly drawn to him she can't figure out why well she knows he has latent magic in him but like Mm. it'll never come out he's never gonna be magical he just probably has a magical parent and she's really drawn to that but then I mean, she should have broken up with him already because she's, like, lying about her true self around him. But then she gets two voice notes he clearly did not mean to send her. Oh, the day before she's going to meet his dad, by the way, who's, like, been out of the picture. Um, And it's him, like, cheating on her and being really awful. And so she decides to get back at him. (laughs) Uh, She's going to take advantage of the fact that his super hot dad just showed up at her bar that she owns and fuck his dad. Normally, this is not a premise that I love. I know it's really popular. I'm just not a big age gap romance person. Mm -hmm, Me, yeah. However, in this case, he's a demon. And so, what are you going to do? 
So far, I'm having a great time. The spirit of Halloween takes away exactly. your your aversions, your gag reflex. It takes away a lot of things. It's apparently, spooky, that I've learned in these books. the spookiest of seasons. Mm-hmm. Truly a magical time. I really want to read The Widow of Rose House. I started the audiobook. Mm-hmm. And I've heard it's very good. I've heard it's by, is it? Diana Biller. Diana I read the Biller. second one in that series. Mm-hmm. And I've heard she's just an amazing writer. So, like, I started that and then I had other things to read, I think, for I don't even know what. So then I stopped and I'm just going to start it over because I wasn't paying enough attention. Um, but I'm very excited for that one. And that's, like, my main TBR because I'm just such a I mean, movie reader. Fair. But- I... I need to read that one. When I first was mm-hmm. on NetGalley, I read The Brightest Star in Paris, which is the second book. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize it was part of a series, although I should have realized. The covers look so different. They do look very different. Well, but I just didn't yeah. realize it was in a series at all. Um, yeah. And I should have realized when, like, it was very, you know, when you're reading a later book in a series and you can tell yes. you're interacting with characters that you are supposed to have already met. It was that. But because I hadn't read the first book in the series, I was totally not expecting. I mean, I knew it was like a ballerina, second chance type mm-hmm. romance I was having a good time. Was not expecting the ghosts. Didn't know that there were ghosts. All of a sudden, she was talking to ghosts. I was shocked. Oh, yeah, because the first one deals with, I think, ghosts. The second yeah, one I... also deals with ghosts. And you know how I feel about a literary ghost. Oh, that yes. is both literal and metaphorical. We <sighs> love we love the ghosts Nothing gets here. me going like a ghost. <laughs> um, I have just a few more recs from people on Instagram for um spooky time novellas if you're interested. Uh Sinister Desires by Phaedra Rose, I believe. The image is cut off. Um it says he has a giant pumpkin head, vine hands, but a man chest. So what more do you need? Um then there is Pleasured by the Pumpkin by Callie Snow. <laughs> the cover has one of the scariest pumpkins I've ever seen, not because he is flaming or enraged he's just delicate um oh and then (laughs) i can't really see i mean i can see that the pumpkin itself i can't see anything beyond that that's just all that's just all oh it's just the head yeah just the tip (laughs) just the tip just the stem it's just the head Um, (laughs) (laughs) um okay there's that and then there were a few more in the suggestions. Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. That's on my really list as well. Um, Halloween Boo by Sarah Spade. I had downloaded that one, didn't get there in time. And then I was also recommended Pumpkin Pounder. Um, and those were from there. I think there may have been a few more on Twitter, but I can link them in the show notes. I do have a few more. Keep Because I have then. a giant list. Spooky season is my time. One, Bewitching by Jill Barnett. This makes me think of Bewitched, the show, but if it were a historical romance in which they have a whirlwind romance, fall in love and get married, and only after they're married does he find out that she's a witch. I love that. What could be better? Damned If You Do by Olivia Waite is the first in a duet, I want to say, so Mm. there's a second Mm -hmm. one. I don't really remember a ton about it, except that it takes place, like, in hell. I don't know. Look up the summary, please, because it sounds chaotic. I just don't remember what it was. But it was enough that I was like, oh, I will be reading that. Um, what You Gonna Do, obviously by Avery Flynn, you have read. What You Gonna Do is the one where she, like, yo-yoed on his dick on the wall. Yes, 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 and you needed a yeah, barbie. That one, did that episode come out yet? For What You Gonna Do, I would implore you to just, like, download a sample whenever there's a sample available to see if the writing style's for you. It was not for me, but it could be for you. And it was very steamy. So there's that. There you go. Okay, and then my last few are Sleepless at Midnight by Jackie D'Alessandro, which, mm. I, if I'm remembering right, is about when the Frankenstein craze, like, hit England, oh. and she, the heroine, sees the hero disappearing into his house or apartment or whatever um, in the middle of the night carrying a shovel, and so she breaks into his house and i think yeah. it's like waiting in his bedroom but also might be naked i don't really remember but i know it was enough to get me to write it down because <laughs> me too queen um <laughs> dead collections by isaac fellman is i don't think actually a romance although I, I think it's romantic i don't know i haven't read it but it's a um a trans vampire and an archivist or maybe the trans vampire is the archivist you don't see many archivists. There's, They're in a library, and I remember being wow. excited about it. And then my last one is After Hours on Milagro Street by Angelina M. Lopez. Mm, is that spooky? 
I, I don't know that it's spooky. I have been told that there are ghosts. I don't know if they are real ghosts or huh. metaphorical ghosts, but I think part of the premise is that the the one character has a I think it's the, the heroine's bar is haunted or might Whoa. be haunted. But again, I don't know if they're literal or metaphorical ghosts, but either way, I was told ghosts and I've been meaning to read that book anyway. So I've heard really good things about that one too. And apparently it starts off very steamy as well. Someone made a post about like things that starts off with a bang. You'll um, have to see it. I have the audiobook downloaded, so I will yes. be reading that one. And that just moved up. I didn't realize it. I thought it was more like summer vibes, but it might still be um, summer vibes. I do yeah. not know. All I know is there is a promise of some kind of ghost. Well, same thing with like Astrid Parker. Like it's a little bit spooky. Um it's n- not really It's perfect for fall. Again, it comes out in like november or something so you're probably gonna get it around christmas but um it was just like there's like a spooky in and i appreciated it you gotta love a spooky in you really do i think that's... you also gotta let the spooky demons in mm, to your body because you? i yeah. sometimes the pumpkin well, head was a they're demanding too far for me i look the vines maybe not so much the pumpkin the- dildo the vine I c- you know, I could bore the train I of the pumpkin I dildo. Could. I can't do the meaty tongue. Oh, the meaty tongue, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my one final note is that authors, please, if you think you may have used the word wanton instead of wanton, just do a control F. Just search. Just do a cute, quirky little search for both words. Just to cover your bases. Um, we've had narrators pronounce wanton like wanton. And now I've seen wanton again. They're different things. And uh, truly, it brings me joy. I can't <laughs> deny that. But I would implore you, <laughs> so Caroline doesn't get another text, wanton! <laughs> Demonic. <laughs> Demonic wanton. Speaking of which, the next Immortals After Dark I have to read is a demon. We're finally getting to the demons, and I'm Amazing. so excited. I'm so excited. They have horns. I'm ready. <sighs> horns are a move. Speaking of which, you're gonna do. He keeps his unicorn horn throughout the year. Not the hero, but a man. Unicorn shepherds okay. keep their horns. <laughs> I was like, is that supposed to be a sell for me? <laughs> like, oh, no. he's got a unicorn horn and he keeps it on. <laughs> like okay i know i'm a horse girl but i'm not that much of a horse girl you never know until you ride no i think i do know i I think i know you've never seen a unicorn Uh, she has (laughs) you don't know my secrets (laughs) all right keep your secrets i was trying to find a way to Flip that back on myself and it didn't there. work. I love there. that gif. All right, then. <laughs> Keep your secrets. All right, Frodo. Pack it in. You I'm hobbit. more of a Samwise gal. I'm just not a Lord of the Rings gal. Mm. That's the fault of my friends who made me watch all of the Lord of the Rings extended editions back to back, though. My parents or my father, let's say, did that. We yeah, had the DVDs and they were like two DVD copies worth. So like one movie was two DVDs. hmm it was a lot to handle. But I will say, Carl Urban was one of the founding fathers of my sexual awakening. So I mean, he is hang on, which he one is sure he? in Oh God, I love Carl Urban. He was in like the Born Identity, he was a bad guy. He was in the new Star Trek. He was the doctor. Um, he was one of the sons in the Lord of the Rings. Oh. This man? This no. He's probably older now. He was real hot. I don't No, I'm looking at young pictures. Oh, I love This Carl is Irwin. your man? <laughs> That's still him old. That's, That's old to old. you? Yeah. You know what? Maybe I should be reading more um age gap romances. Like young Carl Urban can get it. <laughs> no, he still has a weird face. You okay, said well, my I like awakening in reference to Lord of the Rings and I thought we were talking okay. about Aragorn, Aragorn, Aragorn. Okay. What's his name? He is hot. Aragorn. He is hot. No. Oh my god, I love. Okay, well he's mine then. You don't. Once you see, if you ever encounter him, fine. All I want is Aragorn. Him, you're like, wow. Yeah, I could. Aragorn can go take a flying leap. What? Off of <laughs> what? 
<laughs> when compared to Carl Urban, my I know you are not comparing that frog face man to <laughs> Aragorn. <laughs> I'm sorry, he Carl Urban can get it. No, he, he cannot. Really can. Yes, he can. He got it from me. Well, <laughs> never mind. Um, the yeah. the only other person in Lord of the Rings that truly listen. I recently watched the Hobbit movies. Whoa, whoa, ho. which one are you gonna say? Um, oh, now I'm linking on his name. He is very attractive. Hold on, the hot one from um. <laughs> oh, what is his name? He was also in North and South. Aiden Aiden Turner. Okay, he no, he. Uh, you know what? I lied. He was also hot. There were two Aiden hot guys Turner. In Aiden Turner. Let me was tell you, hot. I watched those movies for him specifically. That's so. not who I was referring to, though. And you're gonna. This is. My reaction to you being into Carl Urban okay, might be... Um, I'm so ready for this. Oh, Richard Armitage. That is his name. The guy who plays Thorin. <laughs> okay. So we have reached a stalemate, <laughs> Look, if you will. Not so much... I mean, listen, I was I into him see. as Thorin. I won't lie to you. I was into him initially in North and South, though. Look back at me. I, I just got a picture of Richard Armitage as Thorin, and I was a little... Look, I know, I know, but there's so, he's so charismatic and angry, I don't know. You're telling me this man, this is a fine man. Mm-hmm. Intriguing. Okay, well, I love that we just discovered those things about ourselves. We're, so. You're probably going to need to cut almost that entire thing out. We so can we cut should it. wrap this episode up. We can we can put it places. <laughs> we can put it places. <laughs> well, you know what? So can Jack the Pumpkin King. And See, I didn't I can't want cut him it. putting it in those places. See now I can't cut it. <laughs> we can cut most of it. They don't need to know <laughs> what's said in the deleted <laughs> scenes, clips, whatever. <laughs> what have you? Yeah. Okay. So that was our chaos. We hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you read some chaotic, spooky season mm -hmm. novellas or paranormal romances or gothic, whatever you want. I don't know, yeah. man. Spooky season. What a time. Spooky, sexy skeleton season. Spooky, is... sexy skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want spooky, sexy skeletons on a t-shirt. I have to hazard a guess that that's on some it must of t-shirt. Although I also want a t-shirt. If any of y'all listening know how to make t-shirts, I'll pay you money because in Immortals After Dark, there's a character who, um, we have, I haven't gotten to her book yet, but in somebody else's book, it's mentioned she's a witch. And when people make fun of witches, she says, double, double toil and trouble, motherfucker, you've been cursed. <laughs> and then curses them. And I so badly would like a t-shirt. That says double, double, toil, and trouble. Uh, doil oh, my God. Double, double, toil, and trouble, motherfucker. You've been cur I just want that on a shirt. Hey, people who can design things, I have money for you. <laughs> She's got money in a dream for um, <laughs> double, double, toil, and trouble, something, something, fuck, something, you, something. Now I want a shirt that says that. <laughs> <laughs> that specifically. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This has been unhinged. Mm hmm. Okay. Go Bye. drink some pumpkin spice syrup. Go. Ooh. <laughs> He's had to take it too far. <laughs> I didn't yeah. take it too far. The author took it too far. Yeah. I'm more of an apple cider um, gal. So I'm happy that my taste can stay refined and glorious in the face of. A giant, glaring, demon face, flaming skeleton man. I mean, is that not what you see just like when you look in a mirror? Like, well, that's rude. <laughs> oh, okay. What is wrong with us? Well, we've been reading Good like Lord. crazy, weird demon fucker we sure romance. Have. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween from your queens at Ooh. romance your tbr <laughs> hate i would love for you to find a way to play spooky scary skeletons as the outro is it copyright i don't know it's fine i'll just sing it for you how many okay, times did caroline sing in these various episodes except now it's spooky sexy skeletons 
that's it. That's the end. That's it. That's all. <laughs> that's all. I'm, that's all I'm giving you. I'll get. I'll put our. Spo- I got some spooky music. I'll oh, that's right. Put it was a do. backing track. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>